All right, so um, Latavius Davis, Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm the lead yard instructor for 160 Driving Academy. Uh, we're officially going to go through and do a pre-trip by the book for go. Utah standards. Um, so yeah, we're going to use this as a tool for training. And this is what you know all of the students going forward are going to know and see, especially with the new test format rolling out September 1st. Uh, we got the FMSCA uh, come February 2022 that is going to be in charge of things now. So this is what this video is for. Pay close attention. All right, so I'm at the front of my vehicle and I have my keys in my pocket. I'm approaching my vehicle. And what I want to do first is I want to take a squat here and I want to look under my undercarriage for any puddling, any leaks, dragging hoses or wires. And I see that there are none. Everything is clean and clear. Um, and then I don't see that my tractor is leaning to one side or the other, which will indicate a bad or blown shock or low tire pressure. Uh, I'm gonna come to my lights, right? So I have my clearance lights at the top. I have my side marker, and my side signal right here, my turn signal indicator. And we now have to call out this reflector, uh, particularly to the freight liner. And the difference on the international is that reflector is right here. So we still have to call it out. That is actually now a part of the new test. So again, I have my clearance lights, my side signal and side marker, my turn signal and my reflector are all amber in color. They are properly mounted with screws, present and tight. Uh, none of my fixtures are cracked or broken, have holes or condensation, okay? And then we go to my high beams and my low beams and my fog lights. They are all properly mounted, nuts and bolts present and tight. Uh, they are not cracked, broken, damaged. They have no holes or condensation. All right, my hood seems to be in good working order. It's not broken or damaged in any way. Sorry. Um, and my hood latches. They properly latch, but now I'm unlatching them so I can open my hood. All right, we're gonna start on the passenger side. So there are no changes uh, with the new testing form as of yet. So on the passenger side, the under engine compartment, what we'll start with is my exhaust system, which is properly mounted with nuts and bolts that are present and tight. There's also a clamp here that's present and tight. Uh, it's not cracked, broken, or repair welded. And there's no black soot, which would indicate exhaust leaks, okay? Uh, here, we have my alternator. Uh, my alternator is properly mounted with bolts that are present and tight. It is not cracked, broken, or damaged, and it is belt driven. My belt, which is right here, is properly seated. It's not cut or dry rotted, broken or frayed, and there's no more than three fourths of an inch of play from the center. And then we go to my alternator wires. This red cord right here. We have my alternator wires properly mounted to my alternator. They are not cut, spliced, bare, or frayed. And there's no indication of tape on my line. Okay? That takes care of everything for my passenger side. Now we come over to my driver's side. And what is actually new is a uh, we have to do a, a visual and general inspection of all of our hoses and our lines. Uh, we have to check our engine head now, our transmission, which is, where are you? It's like right down here and up underneath here. Uh, just to make sure that, again, we don't have any leaks. So, excuse the dirt, but you know, my engine heads, my transmission down here, uh, everything appears to be clean and clear. There are no leaks that I can see indicated. All of my lines and hoses look like they are properly mounted and intact. Pretty general, nothing specified to me as of yet, but I think that's the pretty, you know, a pretty general layout of what they want for that. Um, now what I like to do for uh, you guys is just follow this pattern. We go in a zigzag formation from left to right across and then we come from this way down, forming a Z. 
and then we come from this way coming back across this way and we'll work our way from the inside out to the wheel um, that basically takes this entire engine compartment and breaks it down into a very simple format that you guys can use that way luckily we don't forget any parts we don't skip any steps as long as we follow that path so what we'll do is we'll start with our coolant reservoir our coolant reservoir is properly mounted with nuts and bolts present and tight it is not cracked broken or leaking and it is at a good operating level which is between a minimum and maximum fill line on our sight glass right here it also has a good cap that is not cracked broken or missing it is not leaking and the seal is not cracked or dry rotted pretty straightforward uh, i have my coolant reservoir hoses which are right here there are a few of them i have my line over here uh, i got my one of my lines right here right they're all properly mounted with clamps that are present and tight. I use the A, B, C, D, and L method with my hoses. Basically, the A, B, C, D, L means abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot because it's rubber, and there are no leaks because it's the fluid that we're indicating. And so that's what I use for all of my for all of my hoses. Repeat, repeat that real quick. Abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, and leaks. It's not leaking. A, B, C, D, L. You'll hear that often. <laughs> Uh, so again, following my Z pattern, we come over to my air compressor, which is right back here. All right, I got my air compressor that is properly mounted with nuts and bolts present and tight. My air compressor is not cracked or broken or audibly air leaking. We say audibly air leaks because it's air. So we're listening for audible air leaks. And then I have my air compressor lines and hoses, everything that's running through um that are properly mounted with couplings those are these little deals right here and those are present and tight um, my hoses are not or don't have any abrasions bulges cuts uh dry rot in this case or audible air leaks and the last thing that i want to let you guys know is that the air compressor is gear driven that means basically when the truck is running it's building up air pressure when we've lost air pressure those gears are turning to build our air pressure back up so that's what we're doing here. All right, so again, we're coming we're coming down now. We're staying inside, but we're coming down. So we're gonna go ahead and hit our oil dipstick right here. Put my papers down. So what we wanna do for Utah is check that my oil dipstick is properly mounted and secure with bolts present and tight. It's not cracked, broken, or leaking. And my oil is at the proper operating levels between the minimum and maximum fill line. And this is my oil fill tube. If I needed to fill my oil or put a little bit in to top it off, this is where I would fill my oil at. My oil fill tube also has a good cap that's not cracked, broken, or leaking. And it has a good seal that's not dry rotted. All right, so coming across this way, still following my path, I'm coming to my water pump. Now my water pump is securely mounted with nuts and bolts present and tight. It's not cracked, broken, or leaking, hence the water pump. Uh, my water pump is also belt driven, just the belt right here. Uh, and then we go right back into what we've already identified before. My belt is properly seated, it's not dry rotted, it's not broken, it's not frayed or cracked or cut. And there's no more than three fourths of an inch of push or play from the center. I'm running right into the connection. It's all like a big puzzle. Running right into the connector of the water pump is the water pump hose, which is properly mounted with clamps that are present and tight. Here we go again, A, B, C, D, L. My hose has no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, or leaks, okay? And then we come right back across. Uh, the new thing that we have to indicate for Utah is the power steering pump, which is right back here behind my frame. You follow this hose, back to where my power steering pump is back here. But we're gonna follow the path now. That's the new part that's added to the pre-trip. It was never there before. So we have my power steering pump or my power steering reservoir, which is properly mounted with nuts and bolts that are present and tight. My reservoir itself is not cracked, broken or leaking. And it's also at a proper operating level between the minimum and maximum fill line on my site. My reservoir is also equipped with a good cap that's not cracked, broken or leaking. And my seal is not dry rotted. Uh, my radiator reservoir or my radiator system has three hoses. Uh, there are three of them. They're all properly mounted with clamps 
and couplings to the gearbox that are present and tight. Uh, my hoses themselves has no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rots, or leaks. Okay? So we'll follow our hose back here to our power stern pump, which is right back here, like I said. Now we're just gonna say that my power stern pump is properly mounted with nuts and bolts present and tight. It's not cracked, broken, or leaking. And it is also gear driven. Okay? That's pretty much it. And then we come into our, um, our steering column. So our steering column is gonna follow all the way down to our gearbox. And then we're gonna go into our steering linkage, which is, which is then gonna complete our steering system. So we have our steering column, which is properly mounted with two U-joints that are present and tight. The U-joints themselves are not cracked, broken, or repair welded, and they're properly lubricated. Uh, the steering column itself is not cracked or broken, is not bent, and there's no more than a quarter inch of play from the center, okay? And then we fall down into our power steering gearbox, just properly mounted with nuts and bolts to the frame, these mounting bolts here that are present and tight. It is also not cracked, broken, or leaking, and it doesn't have any repair wells or illegal wells on it. Pretty quick and easy. Now we come down to the final portion of our steering components, which is our steering linkage. It's a four part uh, deal here, which involves our pitman arm, which is here. We have our drag link, which is here. We have our upper control arm, and then we have our lower control arm, which is this part down here, all right? And then we have our tie rod, which runs from our drive uh, steer tire to our passenger steer tire. This goes all the way across. So basically that connects the rod or that connects the tires, so tie rod. But all of those parts are called steering linkage. So what I would say is my steering linkage is properly mounted with this right here. It's called a castle nut and a cotter pin or a cotter key. Um, and they are present and tight. My steering linkage is not cracked, broken, repair welded. Um, and they are all, they have three ball joints, with the bushings that are properly lubricated. These aren't cracked or dry rotted. We have one ball joint here. We have one ball joint here. And we have the other on our tie rod and our lower control arm, which is right up under here. And then we have one that's on our passenger side that's on our tie rod and lower control arm as well. So we have three ball joints on our driver's side, one on the passenger side, and they are properly lubricated, okay? So that now completes our steering system. Now we're gonna get into our suspension system. So we're gonna start, again, working our way. We've completed our path, going down into that Z pattern. Now we're gonna work our way from the inside out. Um, we have our leaf spring hanger, our front leaf spring hanger, and then our rear leaf spring hanger is back here, right? So our leaf spring hanger is mounted to the frame with mounting bolts that are present and tight. There are none missing. Uh, our leaf spring hanger is not cracked or broken and it is not repair welded, okay? And then we go into our leaf spring and this is a new addition, so pay attention guys. Uh, the airbag is now gonna be mentioned on the test as well. Uh, what I also found out is that this mount that's up underneath right here and these bolts, they're U-bolt like. Um, essentially, if the airbag was not here, this would be mounted to, uh, the leaf spring would be mounted to the axle with the U-bolts, but this is just an airbag mount for the airbag and those shortened bolts are in place of the U-bolts. So essentially, it still works the same, but we're just calling it something different and that's a correction on my part. So we have our leaf spring that's mounted to the axle and the leaf spring hangers. We have our shackles back here, our bolt shackles back here. And then we have our airbag mount right here that's bolted to the axle and it is securing our leaf spring. Um, our leaf spring is not cracked or broken or repair welded. It is not broken or twisted. And then we have our airbag itself um, is not, it has no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot. It's not audibly air leaking. It is filled to the proper operating level or inflated to the proper operating level. And I was also told that this was a leveler. So as long as this is level, we don't have to really mention it, but just do an eyeball test. 
is not going up or down one way or the other, then our airbag is equal. You know, it's level. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we go from there to our shock absorber. So our shock absorber is properly mounted to the frame and the axle with mounting bolts that are present and tight. Our shock absorber is not cracked, broken, or damaged. And right here where we see the section or this, this upper lip to the bottom lip and this ashy area right here, what we're looking for is leaks. So what we'll say is um, our shock absorber is not leaking from the center, which would indicate a bad or blown shock. If we had a bad or blown shock, this would be a shiny oily residue right around here. Okay. Now that takes care of our suspension system, at least for our, uh, our under the hood engine compartments. Again, using the flow, working our way out to in or in to out, we are now going into our brake hose, which is here. Our brake hose is properly mounted with couplings that are present and tight. The hose itself is not cracked, broken. Uh, there are no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot. It's not audibly air leaking. Again, we're dealing with an air component. So this is an audible air leak. It's leading right into my brake chamber. Uh, my brake chamber is, is properly mounted with nuts and bolts that are present and tight. It's not cracked, broken, or dented. Uh, we say dented with this one specifically because we have calipers in here that turn. So we don't want anything damaging or denting and, and hindering the rotations of the pieces inside. All right. Now, what I actually was told yesterday, I want you guys to come take a look at this. Is this is not a clevis key. This is actually what they want me to identify as the push rod. So with this being the push rod, when, when I had the examiner push on the brakes, this part pushed out, it pushed the slack adjuster out. And then this part right here was just identified as, DJ, what you call it? Like just the slack, the slack it, was, adjuster. it was just like the slack adjuster, but that's what this part is adjusting that slack once it's pushed out, okay? So now we say my push rod is, um, you know, properly mounted to my slack adjuster with cotter pins. That's these two guys right here that are present and tight. Um, my push rod is not cracked or broken. It's not repair welded or damaged in any other way. And my slack adjuster is uh, not cracked, broken or repair welded, and it is properly lubricated. Now here, we don't have to say chalking tires anymore or uh, releasing our brakes anymore. Here, basically what we say is, this is where I will pull on my slack adjuster um, and ensure that there's no more than one inch of play, um, you know, in, in that slack. Otherwise I will stop and have my brakes professionally serviced. Okay. From there, we come into our brakes with our brake lining. That's this part right here. And you can see that it's segmented. So these are pieces. There's a piece here, there's a piece here. What we wanna do is just make sure that they are present. They are all intact. There are no pieces missing. And there's at least a quarter inch of material on each of them, okay? And then we're gonna get into our brake drum, which is this part right here. It's going all the way around. Um, the brake drum is easy to see because it's usually indicate, indicated down here. I don't know if you can see it. It's the shiny material. It's right here. It's super slick, super, shi uh, super shiny. Um, and what we wanna say is that our brake drum is properly mounted. It's not cracked, broken, repair welded. It's not dented or damaged. There's no oil or contaminants in my drum that would, uh, you know, restrict basically you stopping. Uh, and one thing we also need to mention is there are no heat stress cracks. Um, so we need to make sure we say that as well. All right. And then we come to, we're coming out now. So we come to our steer tire. We say, uh, this is my steer tire. It is evenly worn. It has at least four 30 seconds tread depth. Um, it cannot be recapped. There's no uh, dry ride or cuts, no abrasions or bulges along the tire or the sidewall. Um, the sidewall is also properly beaded to the rim. All right, it has no audible air leaks. And then we go right into my rim since I addressed it. My rim itself is not cracked or broken or damaged, it's not repair welded. And then we come down into our lug nuts. We say my lug nuts are all properly mounted. 
and with nuts that are present in type there are none missing uh, they have no elongated bolt holes and if any of my lug nuts were loose there would be an indication of a black trail or residue on an aluminum rim there will be a rush trail on a steel rim and this is an aluminum rim okay the last thing we get into is my valve stem my valve stem is present and properly mounted it's not cracked or broken or audibly air leaking it has a good dust cap um, and this is where i would check with a tire pressure gauge to ensure that my tire inflation is filled to the proper operating level what is that level uh that level is somewhere on this dirty tire is it the 105 <laughs> right here yeah that could be it I don't know who put that sticker there, so I can't. Tire pressure, 105 PSI. If you need to know as a trucker, as a student, just out of curiosity in your own time, just look at somewhere around this tire. You got a set of numbers and it'll tell you what the proper inflation should be. You have a cold max and then you have a hot max, you know, from when you're actually driving. Okay. Okay. So that takes care of the complete engine compartment. Um, that's what's considered, well, that's form A, right, DJ? There's no, not, what was the thing about the seal? Remember about the hub? We oh, not. the hub seal. Yeah, so, oh, that actually was what I told you that was back there with the trailer. Oh, okay. But the hub seal, yeah. The, <laughs> the, I probably need to check this too, to be honest with you. But the hub seal um, is properly mounted with bolts. We have a cap on it. Um, you know, typically we'll just pop this off with a flathead screwdriver. But the hub seal is mounted with uh bolts that are present in tight and what the examiner said that we have to now do is he wants us to be looking at that sight glass not necessarily saying pull the plug out and dip your finger into whatever the case is like if you don't see any oil on that sight glass where it's supposed to be in that cold and max fill level if you don't see any oil on that sight glass then it's okay to pull the plug okay so i have my hub seal which is mounted with bolts that are present in tight is not cracked, broken, or has any indication of leaks. If it did have an indication of a leak, there'd be an oily residue coming around here, all right? And then that's when I, there's a rubber gasket on it. I would pull that plug, look inside, and then I would fill, you know, to the proper operating level as needed, okay? So that takes care of that. Um, or, and, but if it was a clear slide gap one, if it was a clear hub seal, we would just check to make sure it's at the Yeah, top that's what he said. He said, just, just check, just check to where it is, yeah. um, and then just go from there. So that saves us some time as well. We'll stop it right there for the engine. All right.